Hello, it's another week. I hope that you're making the strides that you need to make. I hope you're moving. I, it is March, remember? It's the second week of March and this is episode number six in the uh, Momentum series uh, where we are helping you together. We are working towards creating an awesome year in 2017. Now, I know um, there's, there's lots of us, you know, uh, and uh, I've been a victim of it. You know, in the past, you've, you've set goals and you've wanted to make things happen, but you know, uh, life happens and, and uh, shh, happens during the year, and uh, you, know, you find yourself in October not moving as, as far or as fast as you should, and then you get into you know, a, a, some kind of negative spiral and then things not working. So we're saying this year that hey, we're gonna stop that and we're gonna do something about it. That's why we're here to talk about the next episode. As you move towards your goals, it is inevitable you're gonna have to deal with toxic and or negative people. Now, there's nothing that can be as, uh, as, uh, as, 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 nothing as big an obstacle as having people who are close to you and yet they're negative, they're toxic, they, they put you down and, you know, and they just, you know, just don't get it. You know, they don't get what you're about. Now, um, usually in my old days, you know, it would have been a case of, hey, if they're negative, just cut them out and, you know, and let's go. But, you know, as you evolve and you realize that, you know, uh, uh, being alive and being present and, and having, uh, having humility is not just about cutting people out. It's about saying, okay, how do I deal with this? What would my higher self do? What would my higher self respond like in situations like this? So, usually, uh, a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of background to this. You know, human beings are, are sponges, you know. Uh, at any one stage, if you're around, you know, people who are always negative and pessimistic and they're always talking about how bad things can be, I know there's certain people where for, for them their default is negativity, you know. All the time it's, you know, something could go bad, you know, even when, when, when you're having a blast, they're always thinking about, oh, it could rain now, oh my God, supposing it rained, and you're thinking, dude, just have a blast. So toxic people are those people who are always, always having something wrong and they bring your energy down. You know, I tell people sometimes and I always ask this question when I'm doing uh, the big trainings. I say, oh, by the way, have you ever worked with somebody so negative that you go home and you're tired, but you don't know why you're tired? You're tired not because you worked hard, but you had to deal with some negative energy coming from somewhere. So pessimistic or, or toxic people are those people who's... Um, Who's, who have the ability to, to infect you with their toxicity, that it affects your ability to be alive, to be present and to serve and to have a great mood. Remember, happy people perform better. You know, you gotta have enthusiasm, you gotta have, you gotta have life to be able to perform, to serve, to do what you gotta do. So today we want to talk about uh, what do you do about these people. Now remember, life is short. You can't spend your time you know, with, with people that, uh, that uh, are negative all the way through. No, you got to deal with that, you know. Uh, it's, it's interesting what uh, good old Jim Rohn said, uh, God rest his soul in peace. Uh, he said, you are the average of the five people that you hang around with, you know. So when you hang around with these people, remember that you're picking up vibes. And if you hang around with negative people, hey, guess what? You're going to have a lot of negative stuff going on. You're going to have low energy. You're going to be, you know, like, Arr! okay. So today I want to share with you uh, 7.5, and I call, I call it 7.5 uh, ways to deal with the situation. Uh, why? Because one of them is half because it might be repeated along the way. But before I do that, I need you to think about this. You don't need to live like a person who is living on somebody else's mercy. You know, God did not create us to live unhappily. God did not create us to, to go through life in, 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 a, in a negative way. No, God created us to be alive, to be present, to serve, to make a difference, you know. And you can't do that if you're negative, if you're always, you know, with people who bring you down. And, you know, if we're going to talk about the types of, of negative people, now let us just categorize them, okay? There's this category, uh, for example, those of you who are employed, there's, there's people like your bosses or your colleagues or, you know, your, t your co-workers, you know. They could be the negative people. They could be the ones who are depressed all the time. You know, they could be the ones who are addicted to, to the wrong thing, you know, addicted to, to food or, or to anger or to pornography or whatever. You know, all that is toxicity, okay. 
they could be some of those and then the second one could be um, uh, if you're in business it could be your clients or your customers you know uh, I remember a long time ago I had a client uh, you know I, I just could not wait to finish the, the deal I just could not wait why uh, this man was so negative it was it was unbelievable and if I could not help the guy and it, you know at the time I was not as as well informed as I am right now so it was really hard I just wanted to always get in and get out get in and get out and much as we did a great job we could have done even a better job if we had uh, uh, if I knew how to deal with that at the time so there's that they could be your clients or customers then the uh, the number the the next category is uh, is your friends you know your long-term friends and uh, gets even into your your intimate relationships okay your boyfriend your girlfriend your husband your wife okay you could have a situation where yes you do have some toxicity there okay negative uh, negative husband negative wife negative you know brothers and sisters you know and negative friends and then there is uh, the final one which is your family your dad your mom your cousins whatever so those are the categories of where you could find uh, some negative people so how do you deal with this I hear you ask now like I said, long time ago, the first thing I would have said, get rid of it, okay? Uh, however, this time, uh, there's, um, there's a better way, okay? Because, like you say, um, nobody is born negative. Nobody is born uh, with, with negative energy. You know, all these behaviors, we learn them as we go. You know, most of us are shaped by what comes in, how much we allow negativity to come in, how much we assimilate outside world stuff, okay? Nobody comes out of his mother's womb and they're boom, I'm angry. No, okay. This stuff is 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 uh, is learned along the way, and anything that is learned, we can unlearn. Okay. So the first thing that we must do as we we prepare to deal with this is we must take charge of our life responses. Okay. You must take charge because if a negative person comes in and every time they're coming in, you see them you're like, oh damn, now he's gonna spoil my day, da, 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 and then spiral. No, who is in charge? Come on. Who is in charge of the way you're going to respond? Who is in charge? You cannot, uh, you know, affect my my mood unless I allow you to. You know, a minute ago I almost snapped at one of my colleagues, and then the minute I, I went to the flash, I said, dude, you're gonna teach something shortly, and you're not practicing. And then I was like, okay. <sighs> okay, why am I reacting like this? Okay, why? Because I was not being in charge, so I took charge and said, okay, there's a reason why this has happened. So take charge, you know. Uh, if if there are going to be negative people around you, you decide how you're going to respond. Now I hear some of you saying, ah, oh, coach, you don't know, you know, I have some real negative dude. You just can't stand the guy. Yes, you can't stand, but you have the ability to respond in a way that empowers you. You know, it is just about you taking back the power to know that you're in charge. Every time you say, oh, this guy's energy affects me, that means you don't have power over your emotions. You know, uh, Robin Sharma says, hey, you got to have personal mastery to have a life mastery. Okay. Now, if you cannot master your, the way that you, you, you respond to situations in life, hey, that means that you know every little thing is going to throw you off. Now we want to make 2017 epic. You got to stay grounded. You got to be in church. People are going to come with their SHIT, excuse the language. But guess what? It is your job to say, uh-uh, I'm not taking some of it. Okay. So number one thing, and this comes from what I've learned in all these years of personal development. You got to take charge of the internal world before you can make a difference outside. So now we say you're taking back your power to say, okay. I am going to respond, not react, okay? Your life is about responding effectively. Response means you have power to do something about it, okay? So, number one, take charge. Number two, always, always, regardless of the situation, take a breath and say, why does this person behave this way and why do I always respond this way, okay? Now, there's a, uh, I say that because um, uh, from experience, again, um, there's a time uh, uh, in my younger days, I, was, I used to work with a gentleman, and uh, this guy was the most fantastic, technically wonderful person when it came to executing the job. But he was so antisocial at the time that it was unbelievable. He didn't want to pick up the phone. He didn't want anybody coming to the office. But when it was just the two of us, he was amazing. You know, we would go and have a drink in the bar, and he would he would be the guy buying. He would, but when we went to work, 
boom, it was so negative, it was, it was, uh, you know, and eventually we had to part ways because it just could not work in the, in the, in the, in that environment. But I've since gone on to learn that if I had taken this and asked myself, why does this guy behave this way? Why do I respond the way I used to respond? Asking that question would have given me better answers. Why? Because, you know, people do not do what they do because they just wake up and want to be negative. No. People do what they do because there's a reason behind it. And asking that gives you the ability to find a way to help, to find a way to support, but also find a way to understand and appreciate. You know, if, uh, if somebody is totally negative all the time, there's a reason why they do it. That doesn't mean it's okay. No. Okay? They're still negative. They're still pessimistic. They're, they're still an ass, whatever. But understanding why will soften it so you can be a little bit more uh, understanding to it, which brings me to point number three, empathize with them. Okay? Empathize with this person. Okay? Uh, people have issues. The, the, the world out there is hard. Okay? You're better off empathizing than snapping back at them. You're better off empathizing than thinking they're an ass because, hey, you're reflecting you, as a matter of fact. So think about it. If you empathize and say, you know what, there's a reason this person is, uh, is reacting like this, okay? And uh, empathizing does not mean you go put your hand around them and say, hey, you know, I really understand why you're such a f whatever it is, you know? And it's okay. No. Empathizing is saying, you know what, I appreciate that this person must be struggling with something, okay? And uh, much as the next one is about confronting the situation, empathizing is about putting yourself in a position where it is not about going head on. No, it's about saying, you know what, there's a problem here and together we can find a solution. This person is obviously suffering from something. It's like, you know, these days when people cut me off in the street, you know, uh, before I, I would have all the fingers going off at them and calling them all kinds of things, you know. However, these days, when somebody cuts me up, I say, you know what, they got a problem, okay? And I just go on and it doesn't affect me, I don't lose it, I don't go on and up. You know, because those days I would, you know, somebody cuts me up in traffic or whatever, I go complaining, whinging, I get to the office, I'm in a bad mood and everybody else's mood is going to be spoiled. Simply because some stranger cut me off, guess what, they're off somewhere probably having a good time and laughing, they don't even give a damn about me, okay? So... Empathize and then next is to have a chat with these people, okay? To have a chat on these lines of hey, you know um, it, it is not about going and faulting them for what they do No, it's about going and making them aware that there's a certain behavior that you find that is not Is not supportive of your relationship, okay? It's about having a chat to say hey, you know what? Um, I just wanted uh, to just say that hey, there's a little bit of, of of this energy which uh, is not so good and I don't appreciate it. I don't know if you've realized. I, I just want to know, you know, what can I do to help us to get better? Now, remember, you're not going after them. You're saying, what can I do to what to lift it up? Why? You're taking responsibility for sorting it out. Now, this conversation might not go that well the first time or second time, but sooner or later people will realize, you know what? Maybe I'm a little bit too, you know, on, on the negative side side and you'll find that slowly but surely they begin what to either change or to come uh, in line with understanding that hey together if we're happier we produce better okay so help those toxic people by talking to them a little bit there are certain people whatever you do it's not going to happen but still you got to talk to them and yes i know there are some people who are just totally unacceptably negative i understand i appreciate nevertheless i am saying give it a shot have a chat with them. Next, decrease how much time you spend with these people, okay? Um, I went away for a long time. I came back and before I went away, um, I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of uh, friends. I still have a lot of friends. Uh, when I came back, I realized there were certain people who were not resonating with me anymore. I was talking about spending time reading and studying and masterminding and they were talking about going to have a beer and, and looking for the ladies and, and spending the time to dance and then when I said no, all of a sudden I became the, the bad person, you know, and they would then start the, uh, 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 that guy, who does he think he is, hey, your opinion of me will never become my reality. What I think about you has nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with me. So guess what? I began to slowly but surely decrease how much time I spend with them. Now you might say, yeah coach, but I work with this person or I live with this person. Hey, if you take charge, you could say, okay, 
out of eight hours, can I at least avoid this person for three hours? Find a way. But if you're talking to them, you're empathizing, you're being the kind of person who is, you know, taking charge, you'll find that, hey, it becomes much easier. Next point is number six, be a role model. Be a role model. Come in with the good energy. Come in. You know, if that person is also negative, give them some love. Give them a hug. Give them a kiss. By the way, the first time you hug them, they'll go like this and they think you're mad. They'll think, what the hell? You know, and they might have a go at you for the whole day for giving them a hug. But guess what? Be a good role model. Be a, the, the kind of person who's going to say, you know what? It's going to get better. Why? We cannot live in this world of negativity. Be a role model who brings some joy and happiness. You know, today I was looking at my little man and, you know, he, you know when, you, when you watch kids, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> he came walking in and he had put on my, my sunglasses and he was putting on my cap and said, this is how daddy walks. And I'm looking at him and saying, no, that is not how I walk. And then he changed the walk and put a smile and said, this is how daddy walks. And I said, that is right. Why? I felt like I was being a good role model to him because I was bringing some joy and love into his life. It's the same principle. Bring some joy and love into this person's life. You'll be surprised. All of a sudden, they'll realize, oh, maybe my ways are not meant for this particular area. They will usually have a choice to, to get better. They might even come and say to you, hey, you know, can you help me? Can you help me? And... Uh, there are certain people, I am a big time introvert. Much as I do this stuff, you'll be surprised. I'm a big time introvert and I spend more time with myself than anybody else. There are certain people who are not going to come out and say, but you might be surprised. They might just come to you and say, hey, how do you do it? You know, I, I have this challenge, you have this problem, and slowly but surely you can help them to get rid of the toxicity and begin to see life differently. I have so many uh, testimonials of people who say, hey coach, you changed my life when you told me I need to stop the negativity. I need to stop thinking things are going to go bad. And it just, why? Because as a man thinketh, so is he. The more you think about negativity, the more you attract that shit into life. So, guess what? Be a good role model. Number seven, set boundaries. Okay? I am one of those people, before I used to know, every, I wanted to please everybody and negative or no negative. Or, but now I am so keen on my mission. I am so keen on what I got to do. I set boundaries in terms of who can come in and who cannot. And these boundaries affect everybody, including my partners, my wives, my children, my everybody else. Everyone, I set boundaries. Why? Setting boundaries helps you to be in church. I will determine, for example, I set boundaries that from 4.30 a.m. to about 6.30, nobody gets into my space. I don't talk to nobody. I don't make no calls. I don't say no what's up, nothing. Why? I want to prime myself, okay? I want to get myself ready for super day, okay? Then the next boundaries I set are the certain people I will talk to, the certain people I will only talk to if I must, the certain people where the boundary is that it will only remain a casual chat. We, we don't take it any further. Why? In setting those boundaries, I protect myself from the negativity, okay? Now, remember that uh, setting boundaries might keep certain people out. My boundaries are set in such a way that they protect me from reacting to things. No, they give me ability to respond better. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, number eight, always, always look for long-term solutions. I'll tell you why I say this. Certain people who are going to tell me, coach, I'm in this relationship, I'm married to this man or to this woman, and this is why it gets really hard, especially for people in relationships and your husband is a negative person or the right, uh, the, whatever, uh, the wife is a negative person or you, you, you live with somebody or your bigger brother or whatever, and you find that you cannot necessarily move away from them, you can't cut them out of your life. This is what you have to do. You have to find a long-term solution. You got to plan long-term on top of all those things you've done. For example, you might say that, you know, I depend on this person for everything, okay? Hey, maybe now is the time for you to say, okay, if I begin to plan long-term to be independent, to start doing what I have to do, to work on working on, on a way to start looking after myself and making some money so that I can get away from the dependency, okay? It is a long-term solution, but you've got to sit down and say, you know what? I am going to plan to stop depending on this person because their negativity is going to kill you. This gentleman is called Tony Robbins, not the Tony Robbins, but another Anthony Robbins. He's, he wrote uh, a fantastic, fantastic course called Deliberate Creation. He said, if there's anything you can ever do, if it means going and locking yourself away in a room without human beings and remain happy, that's what you have to do if you want to be successful and happy in life. I say, that might be a solution. However, we can embrace this and find a way to make things happen. 
So as usual, my friend, take these notes down, do what you have to do, do a little bit of, uh, of journaling, find out where you're, you're, you're progressing, where you're not, give us a shout, give us, a, um, I think it's on this side where you can subscribe to our channel if you want more of this stuff, but also share this stuff so that we together can make a difference to other people, can create momentum, and remember, we have Momentum Live coming up. Momentum Live coming up is where we're going to be live. You're going to see Coach himself with another two, three coaches. Are we going to be taking this stuff to the next level? We're going to be doing it uh, over a weekend and it's just going to be epic. We're going to take you to another level. We're going to discuss. We're going to help you to craft everything that you need to do to make sure that 2017 is an awesome year. And as usual, whatever you do, live strong, live with passion and have the audacity uh, to live life on your terms. Thank you.